And this is kind of the bridge day between one week and the next week. And this is when we do power rankings in this spot. I debut them on Tuesdays at ProFootballTalk.com. And we talk about how I have configured the 32 franchises from top to bottom. So, guys, let's get right to it. Number one again for the, I don't know, sixth, seventh straight week now, the Baltimore Ravens, without question, the best team in the National Football League. There is the Ravens and then a gap, I think, to the next team. And I have moved the Saints up to number two by virtue of that dominant performance on Monday night over the Indianapolis Colts. Seahawks bump up one to number three. 49ers fall from two to four by virtue of losing at home to the Falcons. Chiefs unchanged at five. Packers, Patriots, Vikings all stay in the same spot they were in last week, 6, 7, and 8. The Bills back in the top 10 after beating the Steelers. And the Texans climb to spot number 10 from number 13 after beating the Titans in Nashville. Chris, I'll let you have your first crack at telling me how stupid my list is. Well, no, I I don't think it's that stupid. I mean, especially the top 10. It's hard for me to argue anything there that I look at as egregious. I mean... You know, it's just uh, the Saints 49ers. I guess you didn't give any, like, th- there was no second thought to that. It just, you know, it's crazy. It's a week to week league. The 49ers beat the Saints two weeks ago. I understand that. I guess the other one I'd look at is like, did you even think about the Chiefs over the 49ers at four and five? Where where are you there? Like, how did you how did you go with the Chiefs, Packers, Patriots? I know it's the same as last week, but like, what's your thinking? I'd like to hear your deep dive there. I mean, the only team in that top five that lost was the 49ers. And uh, yeah, how far do you drop them for losing at home to the Falcons? Even if you are bumping the Saints ahead of them when they had just beaten the Saints. The Saints look so good on Monday night. I had to give the Saints the yeah, credit. You got so, to. so I, you know, I'm not going to drop an 11 and three team below a 10 and four team at this point in the season. And uh, even though I've already done it with the Packers and the Patriots behind the Chiefs, I just did not want to put the 49ers, who were 11-2 and two after losing, behind a Chiefs team that, that beat a Broncos team. You know, it'd be different if the Chiefs had beaten one of these other teams in the top 10 soundly or something like that. But I, it just felt like the 49ers only deserved to fall two spots. But you know what? They're 1-2 and two over the last three games. They, they lose on Saturday night to a desperate Rams team. They could end up one and four over their final five. That's not the way you want to go into the postseason if you're the 49ers. Peter, what are your thoughts on the top 10? Mike, the two things I would do is I'd move Kansas City up two spots and I'd move New England down two spots. Because the way I always look at these rankings is what would happen if these two teams played on a neutral field in Wichita? Okay, and so if the New England Patriots played the Minnesota Vikings tomorrow in Wichita, Kansas, I think the Vikings are going to win, you know, and and if the uh, Kansas City Chiefs played Seattle or San Francisco tomorrow on a neutral field, I would like Kansas City. Their defense has rebounded enough to give me faith that they can win a very big game. Now, similarly, I think also your two teams at the top right now are absolutely right. Drew Brees was the thing that was holding me back a little bit on the Saints post-thumb injury. But the last two weeks have shown me that this is the Drew Brees of the last six or eight years. And they are going to be a really tough out in the NFC playoffs. I, I will say just real quick off that Peter, I, I think Peter's right though. That chiefs, the chiefs of the team right now, like I got the, the asterisk next to it. They just go like, watch out. I mean, it, it is, it's, I don't even think their def- their offense is hitting on all cylinders and they still can score like 30 in their sleep. And Peter's right. Their defense, the way that's playing uh, it's been under the radar. Very good. The last four or five weeks. I mean, they're a team right now that, yeah, a few weeks ago I went, okay, yeah, they're a playoff team. I don't know what they can really do to right now. I look at them as being the number one team to possibly upset the Baltimore Ravens. And other than the Ravens, I certainly would say they are the favorite, uh, the second favorite to go to the Super Bowl in the AFC. You know, you guys had me reconsidering my placement of the Chiefs at number five. Now, when I spoke to Patrick Mahomes after that win over the Broncos, I said to him, do, 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 you know, do you like the fact that your team is kind of overlooked now? And he said, I kind of do like it. And you look at the defense, 11.25 points per game over the final, over the last four games, all victories. They are quietly building momentum. They are quietly peaking at the right time. And Mahomes points to that 
that stretch of adversity in the middle of the season where they lost to the Colts, they lost to the Texans at home. He had the knee injury that knocked him out. It forced other guys to step up. He said that defense has a swagger now that it didn't have before. Between guys like Tyron Matthew, Frank Clark, and Chris Jones, you see it in practice. You see it on game day. They didn't have it earlier this year, and it's all coming together as we get closer and closer to the playoffs. And I agree with you, Chris. And Peter, I don't, what do you think? Who's the most likely team to give the Ravens everything they can handle in the playoffs? I think it's the Chiefs. Chris thinks it's the Chiefs. Do you agree? I think it's the Chiefs. And I think this is going to be one of those years where on championship weekend, we're going to look at the AFC championship game and say, this is probably the NFL championship game right here. It was the same way as last year. Didn't we all think, well, maybe not all of us, but didn't most of us think that that the uh, Patriots and the Chiefs, that that basically was the NFL championship game played in the AFC. And and so I think we could see the same thing this year. Yeah, and with the, uh, with the Chiefs, you know, it's funny how it's gone from a presumption earlier this year that it's Patriots-Chiefs in the AFC championship game, then it adjusted to Ravens-Patriots in the AFC championship game, and now it's settling in on this sense that we're going to see the Ravens and the Chiefs get together. And I really do think the Chiefs could give the Ravens everything they can handle. I am still intrigued by what Bill Belichick could do yeah. second time around against Lamar Jackson because yeah, the you. Patriots could, could disrupt that Ravens-Chiefs AFC Championship game, and it could bring us full circle, Chris, back to Patriots and Chiefs in the AFC title game. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely could, uh, and, and I do. I, that's the, I mean, the Patriots are the wild card. I mean, we know, again, I, I think we know right now what the Patriots are. Their offense is not going to improve to where we're just going to go, oh, wow, yeah, they got it going. Brady's <laughs> going to throw for three or four touchdowns every game now. No, but I do think their offense will get better as they go along here to be more serviceable than it has been. And then you're right, the wild card, I mean, you know, Mike, you hear me talk about game plan specific game planning every week there's the master of that is bill belichick i mean there's there's nobody better that's the reason they're dominating the second decade of uh the, the 21st century here and yeah that's the wild card is what would bill what can bill do thinking outside the box to once again maybe stop the chiefs if he needs to and the ravens uh and and that's what's scary about the baltimore ravens in that matchup if they have to play the patriots uh, it's not going to be the same. There's going to be a different plan of attack. All right, let's take a quick look at the second 10. At number 11, the Titans, who fell two spots after losing at home to the Texans. The Pittsburgh Steelers down 2-12 to 12 after losing at home to the Buffalo Bills. Cowboys jump up five spots after handling the L.A. Rams, a game that few thought the Cowboys would win, especially as easily as they did. Eagles up two to number 14. Bucks at number 15, holding steady. I dropped the Rams from 11 down to number 16 after that shellacking in Dallas. Bears drop three to 17. Falcons up six to 18 after beating the 49ers. Browns down two to 19. Broncos down one to 20. Peter, any thoughts on spots number 11 through 20? Yeah, I am moving uh, the Cowboys up to number 11, and I'm moving the Tampa Bay Buccaneers up to 12. And I know the Bucs uh, are going to have a bunch of receivers you've never heard of now with Evans and, uh, you know, and Godwin both gone. But to me, this is the dawn of the we got to keep Jameis Winston era. And how many points can he put up every week? The good thing about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers right now is that they didn't use this as some sort of, you know, wasted end of the season where people don't care. You know, I talked to Winston after the game on Sunday, Mike, and one of the things he said is that Clyde Christensen, the quarterback coach there, has basically preached to them since they were lousy. Listen, forget what the record is. Forget anything other than we got to win this Sunday, and at the end of the year, we'll look at our record. Forget the record right now. We don't care. Just go every week and try to win that particular game, and I know that that's elementary, but I think it's also easy when you're out of it to say, oh, my God, woe is us. And the Bucs have not done that. The Bucs have used this as sort of your primer for 2020. They will keep Jameis Winston, I believe, and they will go into 2020 as I, I think is a, as a good shot to be a wild card team. And one other thing, when you do rankings like this, I think it's easy to look at records and say, ah, you know, seven and seven, they can't be that good. Just look at the way this team has played recently. And Tampa Bay is a tough 
tough game for anybody in the NFL right now. Yeah, they are. They're dangerous. And when Jameis Winston is just, you know, playing the way he is right now, they're they're really dangerous because as we see, when his good is good, it, it's great. I mean, it is. It's superstar great when he's on fire like this. And uh, I agree with you. They're a dangerous football team. Uh, they're going to be missing their top two receivers this week. So that's going to hurt them a little bit. I mean, this is the other thing I want to say. Because I'm, I'm kind of with you, Peter, with the Cowboys. You know, I understand the Titans and the Steelers got better records, been more consistent. But, Mike, through your 11 through 20, I just, I just find it interesting. Like, the Cowboys are the one team I look at there that I go, I still think they have Super Bowl potential. I do. I mean, just because they're so talented. And if they can get hot, and like we saw when everything kind of, like, comes to a pinnacle like it did last week against the Rams, you can see how dominant they can be. I mean, there's a lot of me that just goes, they're really good, can beat, you know, the Texans, the Bills, the Vikings, the Patriots, the Packers. Like, they, they can be in that group. I know they, you know, I'm not saying you're wrong to put them at 13 right now, but I just think it's they're one of the few teams after the top five that I look at and go, I wouldn't be shocked if they got to the Super Bowl. They have that potential. Like, the Steelers can upset some people in the AFC playoffs. I think they have no chance of going to the Super Bowl. Zero. But the Cowboys is a team I go, oh, yeah, they get hot. Watch out. They could do it. Maybe the Cowboys need to screw up the coin toss every week and kick the opening kickoff out of bounds. That's exactly what they did against the Rams, and it still <laughs> all worked out, and they won that game easily. Let me say this about the Buccaneers. Yeah. I hadn't realized they had won four in a row. They were three and seven. They're now seven and seven. They've scored nearly 30 points at they least per game. They scored 35 points every week. <laughs> yeah, they had 28 in one of the games. Every other game, they've been plus 30. And the stat that, that I didn't believe when I saw it the other day, Jameis Winston, the first player in NFL history to have back-to-back -back regular season games of 450 or more passing yards. No one had ever done that before. And that's true. Drew Brees did it in the playoffs in 2011. But Jameis Winston's the first one to ever do it in the regular season. It, and isn't it amazing, guys, how it's gone from – Oh, I don't think Jameis Winston's going to be back. To all of a sudden, it's like he's got to be back. And at some point, I think that they're going to have to worry that, that if they don't use their franchise tag, somebody else is going to come try to take him, Peter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what has happened in the last, say, three weeks. You're exactly right. It's gone from being, should we bring Jameis Winston back? We don't know if we're going to bring him back. To now, he may not come back on only a bridge contract. He may come back on a longer one. I will say one thing, though. He acknowledged to me, I have to cut down on my mistakes. So to me, any to any negotiation that Jameis Winston enters into, if I'm Jason Light of the Bucks, I put my arm around you and I say, we love you. We're not paying you like Aaron Rodgers. You give it away too much. We love you, though, and we think it's going to get better. But I, I, th <clears throat> I think it's going to be really, really a tough contract to do if they do it long term. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.